Now, the person who died was a police officer uh, who was uh, on his way home in the northern part of Taipei in Danshui. He was killed by falling bricks. And now the people injured, more than 21 people were injured. They were mostly light injuries, and they were injured by being blown off their scooters or being hit by fallen trees. In fact, that in, in northern Taiwan, in Taipei, where we are, that's the, the major, the bulk of the damage were falling trees. But the winds were so strong. At one point, they were at 162 kilometers per hour at a strongest when they hit Taiwan. And they were so strong that they actually knocked down brick walls. So it's quite dangerous to be outside. But some people like this police officer had to be outside. So that's what we're seeing right now. And in other parts of Taiwan, even though the typhoon has basically, the eye of the typhoon has left Taiwan is uh, headed toward the sea, towards mainland China. In uh, the periphery, still covers much of Taiwan. So, in the central and southern parts of Taiwan, we're still seeing strong, strong winds and, and heavy rain. Although in Taipei, it stopped raining now. Yes, well, I can say that it's clearly passed in the area where you are now. As it heads towards China, is it still as strong as it was when it hit the island? Well, now it's moving at a, a, a speed of 137 kilometers per hour, which is slower, much slower than it was before. But as you can see, even uh, even at you know even moderate typhoons in Taiwan, as we've seen in the past, can cause a lot of damage, um, including the, the one in 2009. It was a moderate typhoon that caused a lot of mudslides and landslides that killed nearly 700 people, burying an entire village. So there's still a lot of worries, even in Taiwan right now, and they're still assessing the damage, so they don't know exactly how serious the damages are. The different government agencies are meeting this morning to assess what's going on. And the various local governments are sending out soldiers and, and, and other officers to, to check on remote areas in the mountains to see how extensive the damages are. And hopefully there won't be any more injuries or deaths. What about getting the evacuees back into their homes? Is that about to happen? Well, that, that might be too soon right now. There are tens of thousands of people who were evacuated from the mountainous areas, but a lot of the roads in the mountainous areas were shut off, including in scenic attractions like uh, Toroko Gorge or Ali Shan. So these roads have not been open yet, and usually the mountainous areas suffer major damage to roads, so it could take days before they can move back home. So they will be in shelters for a while.